welcome to the School of Love, the place where miracles are normal. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The School of Love. My name is Maria and I am helping people discover their inner potential for love towards oneself and towards the others. In today's video, I invite you to a new episode from the series What I Wish I Knew When I Was Younger, in which I explore various dimensions of everyday life, um, usually negative issues, and I um, dissect them into five levels, which then might promote a healing, um, a healing process. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about people pleasing. I used to be very guilty of this one. I was the consummate, ultimate people pleaser and I was never aware of it. There was, of course, a lot of resentment bubbling inside of me, but I kept it under control. I kept everything under control unless, uh, until I couldn't keep it under control. And usually it was a very small, a tiny, event, a tiny trigger, which would bring me to a tremendous explosion. And everyone around me was kind of shocked. Where did that one come from? So in today's video, I'll define, I'll explain what people pleasing activities are or gestures or attitudes. And then I'll talk about, I'll explain the five steps in which one can get rid of being a people pleaser so that one can pursue a life of fulfillment and contentment. So what is people pleasing? People pleasing is that attitude in which you bend backwards in order to make everyone around us, everyone in this world happy, except for ourselves. How does it manifest? Let's say a coworker asks you to help her or him with a task. You are busy yourself and you really don't think you can add even more to your own workload. Nevertheless, you cannot say no, right? So you stay over time, you work additional hours in spite of having a family at home waiting for you and longing to spend time with you. Just an example. Another example, your family, your parents who have never really treated you well, well, maybe they were abusive, maybe not, doesn't matter, but um, they have this um, habit of somehow managing to bring you to spend all important celebrations throughout the year with them. You would like to do something different. Let's say you have a partner, you would like to spend those celebrations with him or with her or with their family or with friends. But uh, because your parents want you to spend yearly celebrations with them, you spend them with your parents and not with those you'd like actually to spend. And you're old enough now, you earn your own money, probably you don't even live at home anymore. And nevertheless, you cannot say no. Let's say... Your partner asks you to sh save together some money so that he can buy a new car. You think his current car is perfectly fine. He doesn't need a new car, but nevertheless, you join in saving money or taking over a loan so that he can buy his dream car, which is way too expensive for your combined budget. These are all examples and actually quite 
mild examples of people pleasing behaviors. In your gut feeling, in your gut you feel, you know it is not something you want. And sometimes it's also something not right. But you cannot say no. You cannot disappoint those around you. It's very important because most of the time we cannot disappoint those closest to us, like our children. We sacrifice our children for the sake of grown-ups who should know better, but they don't. But maybe they think you owe them something or whatever. Anyway, we sacrifice important things which are objectively important and even we know that they are important in order to please people who actually do not really matter and who actually don't really um, respect or care for us anyway. This is people pleasing. This is a traumatic response, this is a trauma induced response and unless we become aware of it which is the first step in the healing process, we cannot change it. It is absolutely impossible to change even if someone tells us, someone benevolent, someone close to us, someone who probably has his or her own trauma-induced response so that they see this in us. Unless we become self-aware and willing to change, there's nothing there to be changed. The first step is becoming self -aware. Why do I say yes to things I don't want to do? Why do I say no to things I want to do only be in order to please someone around me? So this is very important. Yeah? It is very important to understand, to, to, to become aware, to become aware of one's patterns, to become aware of the things we say yes to, the things we say no to, and to ask ourselves, why am I doing this? This is step number two, in which we identify the trigger. Why am I doing this? What exactly has happened that has led me to saying yes to this unpleasant, this agreeable um, circumstances? Why am I glued to them? And why am I doing my best to please other people? Sometimes, more often than not, at my own expenses or at the expense of those I care and love, I care for and love. What precisely makes this person, this activity, this institution both uh, attractive and toxic, which then induces in me this people-pleasing behavior? So we have to ask such questions. They're heavy at the beginning and sometimes we really feel overwhelmed but by all the emotions which might come up. But it's fundamentally important, it's crucial to ask these questions and then to wait until the real answer comes up and to embrace that, embrace that answer. Because in embracing that answer, we manage to identify the payoff, the reward, which comes from being people pleasers. This is number three. There is always a reward. There is something. There is always something which happens beneath our conscious, which gives us a sense of, of, of validation, of entitlement, of motivation to move on in the same direction because this is the right one. Although, on a even on an even deeper level, we know that is not correct, and this, and that moves against our best interests and our best feelings of right and wrong. And once you identify the trigger and the payoff, it's important to find healthy ways to cope with the people-pleasing behavior, which, as I said, comes from a deep ingrained trauma, which is not yet solved. But in order to solve it, one must dissect the weight with so that we can see trauma for what it is. An ingrained sense, an ingrained wound which has never been healed uh, and which has never been seen and heard and felt. So we have to learn to feel and, and hear the trauma and to, to, to allow it to be. 
to oh, to bring it to air, you know, so that it can it can unfold, so that it can go to rest. That's strong. So this is why it's important to find healthy way to cope with people pleasing. For instance, when someone asks some asks asks something from us, which we know this is I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's say you don't want to meet a person, but then um, someone asks you to and you give in so begrudgingly but you give in because you know you cannot say no no say no learn to say no small things first and then increase the risk so to say increase the framework but start small if you want to live a fulfilled life of contentment it is crucial that you start slow slowly at the very bottom with very small things to say no to declare and say I'm, I'm busy I cannot do that I wish I could but I can't and the final step which is mostly ignored is become grateful be grateful process gratefulness practice gratitude for whatever was brought into your life by your people pleasing behaviors this means embrace that past. Don't deny it. Don't reject it. Accept it for what it is. Accept for accept it for a past which was given to you to make you to turn you into who you are today. And this is very important to to, to gain that sense of fulfillment, that sense of wholeness, that sense of acceptance that you are worthy the way you are right now. Tomorrow will be better. In one minute, you'll be better. In one second, you'll be better. But right now, you are who you are. And this is good. So the five steps very easily are become aware. Identify the trigger and the payoff, the reward which comes from that people-pleasing attitude. Then find a healthy way to cope with it. Start saying no. This is a huge problem for people, pleaser, pleasers, particularly the, the extreme ones as the one I used to be. Um, so identify the triggers and the payoffs and then find a healthy way to deal with it. Learn to say no. That is, that is a very good beginning. Learn to say no. And last but not least, practice gratitude for being here today for your journey and for those you have encountered throughout your journey. Don't reject them. Embrace them and then let them go so that you make place, you make space in your life for better things and humans to come. That will be for today. Thank you for joining me and I'm looking forward to welcoming you again very soon. Love and peace to you all.